Hello, everyone. I'm Marina Plashenko, welcoming you to this exciting webinar, Accelerating Your IT Project in the Cloud. Today, we are discussing how you can get from idea to production in under five minutes. Okay, so let me introduce our speakers for today. Maggie Erber, Senior Product Manager at HiveMQ and Shashank Sharma, Product Marketing Manager at HiveMQ. I would also like to welcome our panelists, Ravi Subramanian, Director of Industry Solutions Manufacturing at HiveMQ and Ryan Duzeum, Solution Engineer at HiveMQ. They will be answering your questions during the Q&A session. Welcome everyone. Uh, before we kick off, I would like to share a few housekeeping moments. So this session is being recorded and we will be sharing the recording later during this week in the follow-up email. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit those in the Q&A port uh, at the Zoom control panel below. And lastly, during the Q&A session, we will be running a short poll and we kindly ask you to um, participate and submit your answers. So without further ado, I will be handing over now to Maggie and Shashank, and uh, let's get going. Handing over to you, Maggie. Thank you, Marina. So also welcome from my side. Um, as Marina already said, I'm a product manager here at HiveMQ. I'm responsible for HiveMQ Cloud, and uh, I have a very a passion about um, creating software um, that basically delights our customers. And I'm so happy to join Shashank uh, today in this webinar to present you um, something that is basically fresh out of the out of the team was just recently released and um, yeah we use this just in this webinar today in the demonstration so uh, keep posted for the demo later and with this I hand over to Shashank. Thank you Maggie. Hi everybody welcome from my side as well. I'm Shashank Sharma, and I'm a product marketing manager at HiveMQ. So like a little bit about me, I am an engineering by engineer by education, and I my background is in autonomous driving and numerical computing. Uh, I'm at HiveMQ since nine months, and I really love uh, talking about technology and enabling developer-centric workflows. And in this case, today we are very excited to present you how to accelerate your IoT projects using cloud. So I'm also work at cloud and uh, at HiveMQ, and that's why this is a topic that's super exciting and cannot uh, wait to share with you. So now let's begin. <laughs> so let's start by discussing a problem at hand. So. Um, Let's think about uh, an actual project, an IoT project. In our case, uh, we have talked, uh, we say, let's say about a power plant and in particular, a solar power plant. So on the uh, right hand side, you would see some of the components of a solar pa a power plant that is such as solar panels, uh, sensors that uh, senses environmental conditions and other uh, electrical and mechanical conditions. Uh, you have typically a battery and an inverter. That's the bare minimum component you need to run a solar power plant. And on the right hand side, you have some stakeholders like you have somebody who needs to control the operations of the plant. You might have a maintenance engineer. You might have a data analyst who is keeping tracks of the KPI, how much energy is being produced, and also a, like general of which things needs to be maintained and which thing need to be repaired. And the whole thing might be connect, connected with the database. So typically for such a condition, there are a lot of resource constraints, uh, typically in terms of time, money, and also resources like engineering resources or other resources. And uh, normally to solve a problem such as remote monitoring, uh, one would typically start with the proof of concept, but then that solution must also scale. So scaling is definitely a part of a challenge and everything, the timelines and time to market is always also critical. So let's keep this problem in mind and we'll come back to it at the uh, later half of the presentation. So when you start the project, you typically think about, oh, 
which protocol should I use? Which tooling should I use? How much time will I need to uh, determine which is the right solution for me? How much time will I need for proof of concept? And then how much time I will need to scale up to production? And then how much money is going to cost me? Is it going to be under my budget? Or do we need extra resources? Do we need extra money? And these are the thoughts that comes into our head. And these are valid problems. And I think uh, for some specific use cases, uh, cloud provide a very uh, reasonable way to solve such problems and we'll see how it provides a way. Now, in addition to the some of the challenges we already talked about. There are also some more challenges when you take an IoT use case from an idea to production. Now, let's talk about some of the organizational challenges. So the first one is reliability of business critical systems. So you need to ensure a consistent and uninterrupted operation of systems that are vital to business functions. And it's very important that any failure and any downtime in the system can lead to substantial disruptions. Now, another one is scalability. As we already discussed, scalability is key in IoT projects. And as the network of inter-devices connected grows and demand fluctuate, the ability to not just only scale up, but also scale down efficiently becomes essential. And then proper scalability uh, will ensure a consistent performance and responsiveness. Cost efficiency of connectivity. So managing the cost is without compromising the quality or functionality is very significant. You might have solutions that provide you the best connectivity, but the cost efficiency might be challenging when you are in low scalability region. And sometimes strategy must be implemented to event, uh, eventually achieve cost-effective connectivity while maintaining the performance. And last but not the least, time to market. So reducing to time to market is very critical and might actually be very important for uh, your product and for the longevity or the future of the product. And it can provide you a quick time to market, can provide you a competitive edge, but you also always must balance it through testing and validation. And that's where, again, the IoT and how to uh, efficiently like use an IoT use case in your project is critical. Now. I will hand over to Maggie to talk about some of the te technical challenges. Thank you, Shashank. So the first technical challenge that I'd like to discuss with you is basically anti-end -anti security. You know, we have lots of data that we do not want to share with the world outside of, of our world. So we need to secure basically the system end-to-end -end from the device up to the cloud and then also to the backend services. Um, so we have to restrict the entire system from basically unauthorized access. But not only this, the next technical challenge is observability. So I need to understand how many clients are connected, which clients are connected, what is the current message rate, um, is there any unexpected drop in the messages um, that I need to investigate, indicating that there's some issue that I have to, that I have, that I have to investigate. So observability is a super important topic here um, yeah, to get visibility into it, and this in real time. Then next is the integration with other systems. Most likely, we do not start from a green field. We already have some systems um, in place that we need to integrate data with. And um, this means I need the, the possibility to integrate the data. And hopefully, the system that I'm using makes it easy enough for me to integrate with, with the, this external um, uh, system. So a seamless integration of data into other systems is super important. And last but not least, user experience. We are completely spoiled from, from all the services out there that work, work super, super nice, intuitive, that are user-friendly, etc. And this is basically what we also expect from, from IoT services. So um, we need real-time communication here to actually satisfy our customers and um, ensure also that our customers can easily navigate and interact with the system, etc. So user experience is another very important technical challenge that we need to think about. All right. OK, so now the question is, if you'd like to, to share with us what are the 
challenges that you are currently facing in your project, uh, project. we're super happy to learn from it in, in the chat. So please use the chat to, to share your, your thoughts and your challenges that you're currently facing with us. We're happy to, to uh, think about them with you. Right, so yeah, we, we are looking into the chat and uh, if something interesting comes up, we'll we'll call it out and see, uh, you know, if something's worth sharing with the whole audience. Um, in the meantime, oh, so somebody mentioned the cost management of running an IoT product, which is uh, ties into uh, cost effectiveness. This is this is very important. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that, and uh, connectivity in a risk averse industry. I think that's also a very valid point. Uh, I think uh, this is I've personally also experienced uh, when moving industries, the speed of you know, adoption of technology or the new technologies uh, is different and there are reasons for that. So sometimes implementing an IoT project in some different industries might have different challenges. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing those. So, now we have seen those challenges. Maggie, I would, uh, I think I'll suggest we continue and then we can comment on the other ones in the end of the uh, session. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. But please, but please continue sending us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. There was actually there was actually one more that was sent: anti-theft system, air monitoring, and uh, neuro marketing. Oh, yeah. Well. that's. So, yeah, that, that, that's actually uh, really good. I think that's, uh, <laughs> uh, you're giving us uh, great ideas if like, you know, we want to uh, maybe show how we can build proof of concepts for them. Uh, those are actually really good idea, but I think these are also consideration, uh, like IoT project needs security, also physical security, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. So, uh, I'll hand over to Maggie again. Thank you. No, awesome, awesome challenges that, that you're facing. And uh, I personally would love to, to dive deeper with, with you on a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, about your challenges. I love challenges. So, um, but let's keep on going here with the, 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 the presentation. And uh, let's look at how MQTT can help you to boost agility and speed in production. So why MQTT? Basically, MQTT is the protocol or the de facto standard for IoT. Now, it has a lot of, of advantages how it helps you to um, speed up things. So first of all, it is an open and vendor neutral protocol, which means it enables you to flexible integrate um, already services into your, into your um, into your components, like your components into your overall system, um, because MQTT can be adapted very easily. And there are a lot of, of, of client uh, libraries out there that you can, can use for this. Then um, next of it is the decoupled pub sub architecture. So this enables you basically to um, add new devices on the fly. You do not have to to affect any existing structure, just add new devices without any problem. And you can dynamically configure the system, which means um, topics and subscriptions can be um, updated on the fly. And then we have um, MQTT that is actually optimized for unreliable networks. So especially if you have moving devices, you know, you need a connectivity to, to, the, to a network that might not be that stable. So you, you have to think about what happens if my device loses connection? What happens if a message is not delivered because of an unreliable network? And MQTT actually supports here you uh, here uh, to handle, um, yeah, basically a reliable connection over an unreliable network. So you also have quality of service levels for measures for example, to optimize for speed, but also to guarantee message delivery. And um, also the message structure is so lean and efficient that, that you have less overhead um, during the data transmission, which increases your overall speed. Then, in addition to this, we have uh, MQTT as a very scalable um, and flexible protocol. So that means it offers you scalability 
very needed. So if you need um, to adopt a new a change requirement or new demands quickly, MQTT supports you here. It can scale the number of brokers, it can scale the number of devices very easily, so you're not blocked here. Uh, then it supports you when it comes to real-time communication. So this means changes are only push, uh, published when, uh, yeah, when changes occur. So you don't have to pull basically, let's say every second if there is a change, now you just get the changes in real time when they happen. So this reduces the, the overhead and this reduces the bandwidth by up to 90% compared to a traditional poll architecture. So actually this reduces a lot of the bandwidth that, that, that you would need. And last but not least, it is actually built for devices. So built for constraint devices, which means it supports you to save energy and uses the resources efficiently um, because you can put the device, for example, into sleep mode and only wake it up when it is needed. And since it is um, so agnostic, not only in platform and language, but also in, in, in data agnostic, you can basically use it anywhere and everywhere. So MQTT is basically the protocol that supports you here when it comes to any IoT project to boost up speed and agility. All right. OK, so now that we have seen how MQTT can already help you here, uh, now the question is how an easy to use, fully managed solution for a faster time to market is relevant, right? So first of all, can a cloud-based solution help? And now I'm quoting uh, Mr. Joe Weinman from like a book uh, it published, which was published a decade ago, a very uh, famous book on cloud computing, cloudonomics. This, he said that the future of IoT is in the cloud. In a world that's connected 24 seven, cloud computing is the backbone that needs to be reliable and available to make real time decisions. Now he, he may not be wrong because as we move in the future, there are so many IoT use cases that are impacting everyday real life and cloud computing is playing an important role there. Now, in our context, let's say, let's, let's propose this question. Is cloud-based MQTT platform a viable solution? So first question, like the pros, the arguments in the favor, it's centralized and fully managed. It, it helps you streamline your operations, centralize all your messaging needs in a fully managing platform, reduces the compli uh, complexity. It's highly available. And that means benefit from guaranteed uptime and automated backups. So that means your critical business operations run smoothly without interruptions. Cloud-based entity platforms have built-in security, with, uh, so you have peace in mind. They have default SSL, TLS encryption, and some additional access controls. So your data is protect, protect, uh, sorry, protected. And uh, a lot of times uh, there is also a compliance factor built in. They have ready to observability tools, which helps you uh, get insight into system performance and uh, helps you make faster decisions, but it also helps you proactively resolve issues such as debugging or detect issues before they can escalate. So this helps you to make uh, your decisions faster and reduces bugs. Um, adherence to MQTT standard, uh, as Maggie already said, it's a big, big uh, plus. Uh, so I think I don't need to say more about it. But uh, it also one thing that I would say it makes it future proof because, you know, like uh, any platform that's MQTT compliant and MQTT being the dominant uh, protocol being used in IoT, it you are future proofing yourself because uh, that way you are relying on an open protocol rather than a closed wall, uh, you know, closed four walls of uh, uh, and you're not building a moat around yourself. Cost effectiveness. So you reduce the total cost of ownership with a cloud-based platform because cloud-based platform typically will offer you scalable pricing model. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but you can also allocate your resources more effectively by offloading your operational burden to experts who know how to use and manage a cloud-based platform. And last and not the, not the least, a uh, cloud-based MQTT platform will provide a great and intuitive user-friendly design that helps you quickly set up, easily manage, and reduce the learning curve of using such a tool. 
now the question is now i have given so many arguments in favor of cloud based uh, mqtt platform the question is is this a viable solution for you in some cases yes and maybe in other cases that's up to you to decide so if you are coming from a big company or a big enterprise you must have your own way of uh, identifying a criteria for a project if a self hosted solution maybe on prem or maybe a self hosted cloud solution is a good idea or maybe a fully managed uh, cloud is a good idea but then i can tell you certainly there are some certain cases where a cloud based fully managed mqtt platform makes uh, clearly a good decision it's a good decision when you have a small engineering team you know where each and every minute is very useful and unique you have clearly defined goals and everybody is fully loaded with their jobs and responsibilities you have no dedicated operations team to manage uh, infrastructure and operational needs of handling uh, infrastructure and operations of a iot broker or cluster or maybe other relevant services if you have time constraints and more importantly if you have budget constraints then a cloud based mqtt platform is a right solution for you now having said that i would also like to talk about hive mq cloud starter so uh, i am sure you guys have heard about hive mq so that's why you are here today and you might also know about hive mq cloud so hive mq cloud is the fully managed mqtt platform it is exactly same as our enterprise self hosted platform the only difference is that it exists in the cloud and we have different plans inside hive mq cloud that goes from somebody who wants to learn only such as serverless to the needs of an enterprise which uh, might be very complex and very detailed and we have hive mq cloud enterprise for that for today for scaling uh, those needs and uncertainty and handling like you know uh, when you want to start small but also start like scale faster and scale big we would focus today on hive mq cloud starter and how it can how what it brings to you and how it can solve uh, your needs and then like we'll see specifically in the demo example how you can you know use this so now i will give again uh, like control to maggie and she will walk us quickly through uh, the hive mq cloud why why you should consider that <laughs> thank you shashank so first of all, Hive MQ Cloud is super easy and quick to, to get started. So um, especially in an environment where you say you do not have a lot of time and you do not want to think about how to, to, to deploy and operate the, the broker, just go sign up for, for Hive MQ Cloud and create a cluster in, in minutes. So you have an, a running uh, production ready Hive MQ broker um, basically live that you can connect your, your clients with. It's super easy to onboard. There are onboarding or getting started guides that you can follow to get your first client connected easily. And it has an intuitive user experience. So you should find everything basically within the product and just play around with it and, and get started easily. That's basically uh, what we what we thought about Hyphen Q Cloud. And then, of course, like I talked a lot about why MQTT is super important for, for any IoT project and, and what are the benefits, et cetera. So, of course, Hive MQ Cloud is fully compatible to the entire MQTT standard. This means to MQTT 3 and 5. And you can even connect MQTT 3 and 5 clients at the same time with the same broker and they can communicate with each other. So, um, Hive MQ absolutely solves this, this issue for you. And since we're in the cloud, um, one of the things that we decided, we only allow, allow TLS encrypted communication between the client and the broker, which means the communication is secured. No one can, can interfere here. And uh, you do not have to think about exposing business critical data here. And of course, we support all the, the MQTT functionality like shared subscriptions, retained messages, um, Etc. So this is just is all included. So we're absolutely fully compliant to the entire MQTT standard. All right. Then the nice thing about it, hey, it's a fully managed platform. Hive MQ experts run it for you. You can just concentrate on your business uh, business case. You do not have to think about 
um oh what happens if i if if i need to to upgrade do i need to plan time for it no we take this over for you we have zero downtime upgrades you have the 24 7 support uh support team 24 7 available for you so even with the startup plan we already decided to give you a 24 7 support plan here um which means you can basically reach out to the support team anytime all right on-demand scaling is uh, also something that uh, is very nice already with the startup plan so we decided to uh, reduce the, uh, the limitation of connections from the startup plan already which means you can scale to unlimited connections of course we have a, a, a short cap so if you if you will connect your your clients it will cap you at twenty five thousand uh, clients temporarily but this is just to ensure that the system is absolutely stable and um, you will be able to scale to unlimited connections just reach out to us and we will remove the this this limit for the startup one without any additional cost so this is just having to say Speaking about costs, it has a super uh, simple pricing. You have basically an hourly cost for the platform and then um, an, an addition for what you basically consumed in, uh, in the form of messages. So it's super easy to understand and basically super, super easy to calculate as well. Yeah. Uh, I, then, I'd like to add one thing here for the pricing. Sure. So uh, it's so simple. So like for every hour you connect right now. So uh, we have currently one plan right now. And uh, for every hour you connect, you pay 34 cents. And for every million normalized message you consume, you pay 80 cents. So I think it's very simple to understand. And uh, we have it very clearly on our website and also in the product. So, you know, if you have more queries, uh, please don't hesitate to ask questions or visit our website. Yes. And once you feel you need additional functionality, um, then it's super easy to upgrade to our professional or enterprise plan. We have a seamless migration path here between, between the plans. So from startup to professional or enterprise, super easy to migrate them. Then next one is built-in security. I guess we talked already a little bit about security. Um, so HiveMQ Cloud was built with like security in mind. So it is secure by design. We only allow TLS secured communication. Um, you have the, the ability to um, manage the access very fine granular, which means you're not only able to um, create credentials that you can that your clients can use to connect to the broker, but you can also create access rights like permissions, um, very fine granular. So not only restricted to publish and or subscribe, topic to publish or subscribe to, but also to more fine granular levels like which quality of service is allowed for which client group. Um, is this subscriber allowed to subscribe to a shared group or not? Or is this publisher allowed to publish a retained message or not? So, at this level, you can also restrict the access here. And something that is already mentioned here and will be available very, very soon is the client certificate authentication. So um, this will be an, uh, a new feature that will be added in the coming days to have MQ Cloud Startup Plan. For the professional and enterprise plan, this is already available. All right. Then built-in analytics. Um, those of you who already have tried out HiveMQ might know this view. Um, for everyone just that, who just had a look at HiveMQ Cloud uh, serverless, might see this the first time. This is the HiveMQ Cloud observability uh, feature that we've now built in with Starter One that gives you the over um, observability of connected devices, of the, the message rate that is currently running through the broker. Um, basically, you can monitor your, your, your KPIs here and, and a lot of metrics. And you can also use it to debug uh, and manage your, your clients, which means you get a list of, of clients that are connected with the service, you can view the details of the client, and then you can also do some administrative actions like disconnect the client if you um, 
find okay this client is and then a client I would not expect uh, to be connected with the broker or you can also manage the subscription of the client of course so you have basically the full priority here of managing the the clients and then um because sometimes it's a little bit annoying to do things manually um you also have a REST API to automate the stuff, which means you can create programmatic workflows for more agility, speed up things here, and um, yeah, basically do what all the things that I just explained from the from the management and the debugging of MQTT clients can also be done via the REST API, basically to automate it. All right, and once you've set up the connection with uh, the MQTT clients, then you might bring your data into external uh, services. And therefore, HyphenQ Cloud also supports you with bidirectional MQTT data transfer between the cloud service and then the other third party services, and which is also easy to configure via the UI. Basically, you have so called topic mappings where you decide from which topic to read and to which topic or however the, the other structure is, is called, then published here, and also vice versa. So it's super easy to configure and very easy to understand. Currently, we have the Confluent Cloud integration available with the startup plan, and other integrations will be added to the startup plan soon. For enterprise, of course, you have everything available, but we're talking here about how to cloud starter. So Confluent Cloud is already available, and others will come soon. All right, with this, I hand over to you, Shashank. Yeah, thank you. So now let's have a look at the application demo. So let's come back to our problem. So quick refresher, we are talking about solar power plant. We want to do, a, we are resource constrained. We have a challenge, remote monitoring for solar power plant. Our solution also must scale. So how would we go about this? So before I go there, I would like to quickly demonstrate you one thing and I'll come back to my slide deck. So I would like to go to a um, cloud. So like, you know, in order to log into my cloud account, I go to the website, I look into this tiny cloud button and then I have already my sign in saved. So uh, I go in and then this is how my console looks like. And I have a starter cluster running. So I can see how many clusters I have and I've created one webinar cluster named webinar, especially for this. And now we are going to show you how to create a cluster in the real time. So right now, if you go create new cluster, you see right now you can create like a serverless or a starter cluster. So we are going to create a starter cluster. I will name it test cluster and they have one tier right now production s and then it will take you to billing so configuration is super easy and all you need to do is add your um, credit card details and then you get like a hundred dollars worth of free voucher on first cluster that you create with us so you have a free trial and it's not time-based you can uh, use all of your hundred credits and try out our product before uh, before you, you try it, you decide if you like it. And there is, uh, somebody asked, are there any feature limitations on the free plan? Uh, yes, we have more features in Starter. So if you want to just try out Starter, I would recommend that you try out the free credits on the Starter, and then you can choose to either continue using your cluster or you can easily delete your cluster and then you won't be charged more. So I, I am subscribing it and it's uh, 1734 my time so you know like in two or three minutes we'll have our cluster ready and in the meantime while the cluster is ready normally we suggest that you go and take a coffee but right now we won't do that we will go back to our slide deck and we will look at how the data uh, architecture might look like so i have made a very simplistic data flow architecture of uh, how the solution could look like when it's scaling. So now we have 
this data coming from sensors and from panels, you know, like there might be some data collectors in between. Somebody asked that question uh, and I think Ravi answered it. So, you know, like it depends and we might have some, you know, like aggregators in between that are publishing the data. Data is also being published by other components such as battery or inverter. And then we have different roles such as like operate operations team or maintenance team might need both publish and subscribe access or there might be some specific details on alerts like you know there might be some higher uh, level uh, uh, topics like alerts that needs a qs level 2 there might uh, there might be a data analyst who might be preparing like a weekly report for our management team or somebody else and they they might only need subscribe access and then uh, we also might need to save the data for later analysis and that also need publish and subscribe and so on. So uh, based on your uh, requirements and how this is coming, we can put a cloud-based solution in the middle, HiveMQ Cloud in our particular case, and uh, have a look at how to enable this. So now I will go, it, it looks, uh, there's a lot of code in the slide, but it's essentially between this slide and the next slide, I would like to show you some topic structure that might help you uh, follow the rest of the demo. So generally a topic structure would be like solar plant and then you might have uh, like keeping it future proof. Uh, in our example, we have one solar power plant, you might have multiple plants. So we'll have plant ID inside each plant, we'll have component types and their component IDs, and then we'll have some metric associated. And then the matrix could be power output, temperature or like specific to panels, we would like to measure the voltage and current. Uh, similarly with battery, we would like to see the charge level, discharge rate or inverter efficiency status, et cetera. And then plant operators might need to know more about operations, like you know how the panels are performing, how the battery or inverter is performing. But the data analysts might need more data, but only subscribe to, so to, to get more data insights. So that's how the topic structure helps us also uh, abstract some of the information. So MQTT is helping already in uh, being the flexible topic structure. And then HiveMQ in between have this challenge to help you easily implement such an idea. Now I'll go back and I'll go back to my clusters. And as you can see, we have a second cluster already called test cluster. So let's have a look in this cluster. So this is the cluster I just created. And now I will show you the access credentials that we talked about. Uh, now, the first thing to do would be to create permissions. Now we have a default that is everything is uh, allowed, publish, subscribe, retain messages, et cetera, et cetera. But let's say you want to uh, create only a uh, publish only, publish only, and then that would be description. I'll skip for the demo, but you can describe what is it. And then the topic that we would need, and I'll go back to my slide. For example, solar plant, plant one overview, let's say temperature. So if I go and I copy this, I might say that solar plant, plant one, and everything else here might we we are giving rights to publish to these topics. We don't want to allow them to subscribe. We are allowing them to say, like create retained messages. Now I have another, uh, so as I can see, I have now another permission. I can use this permission to create a role and my role would be here plant and uh, plant would be publish plant data and uh, sorry for the typos and I will use my publish only permission to create a role. And then I'll create the access credential for a plant, plant publishing service or plant service. So we are creating a service. It's not associated with an individual rather than a service. So we ask to create a, a secure password and I'll quickly uh, type one password and also, oh, passwords match. So I'm good at typing. And now I create a credentials and I've associated this plant role, which I 
said the plant is publishing the data. So this granularity helps me, uh, you know, really uh, build in, bake in security into my system. Now, I wanted to show you in the real time um, for this webinar, I prepared some roles and permissions in my other cluster, and I would like to show you how they look like. So I created a publish and subscribe role, a subscribe only role, a publish only for different components. And then I can technically use this to create a plant data, battery data, inverter data, operation services, analysis services roles, which goes into like things like analysis services, operation services, or maybe like data directly coming from some solar sensor. So this is how I can create my credentials. And uh, once I've create, uh, created my credentials, I would like to show you how to use broker to quickly check the initial check if the data is working, the credentials are working out or not. And for that, uh, we have a great tool in uh, in built and that's called web client. So I would like to say that uh, like, so my web client, I can use it to use my the, the credentials I uh, created just now and connect it to my web client. So right now I am using this as an analyst, which can only the analysis services provide a subscribe only. So we will see all the data that we are subscribing to. So I'll quickly log in here and then I connect my client and then my client is connected. And as we can see, I previously subscribed to a topic, solar plant one overview and temperature. So I wanna see temperature here. And right now we don't see anything because we are not publishing anything. Now, let me uh, add a terminal window here. And I'm sorry, uh, I need to create a new window. Yes. so. I have a new window and excuse me, I don't have dark uh, screen right now. <laughs> it's daytime, <laughs> but I use dark mode in the evenings. Uh, yeah, so right now uh, we will use an MQTT command line interface to quickly check it. So for that, an easy way is to go into the shell mode, MQTT SH. Now I'm in the shell mode and for that I will go to my overview and here I see our URL sports uh, settings. So I will go and say that, okay, now I need, what do I need? I need to publish. So publish is who will be publishing and our plant is publishing. So I will first connect my host and my host URL is this one. So I'll copy it and I'll paste it. And then I will, once I have my host URL, I would be needing a port. So uh, port, my port is 3 Then I will be needing a secure connection. Then I will also use an identifier so that we can identify that uh, name. It's a name that we are giving just to this uh, client. So I will say plant one. Then I will add a user identifier. So we have a role here which is called plant. So I have added plant and then I will add password. So like now when I, I entered it, I would need to enter my password. So once I have done it, now I can use it. Now my client is connected. And let's say I would like to publish, publish and a topic and I will, I have a copy pasted, I'll copy paste the the topic that we talked about, uh, we have it in the web client as well here. So I need to probably connect again. So this, uh, I typed something wrong. So it's the same topic. And now I will add a message and I will say 22.0. Now, as I type it, I see that I'm getting a message published. Now I can again do and say, okay, 22.1, and I get immediately here. Now what I can do here again is create another window and let's say somebody else needs to also connect. So we can again go into another shell window and then add connect. Actually, I will see if I can, 
I will uh, quickly copy paste so that we save a bit of time. And I will again use my analyst credentials. So here I am using the same URL, same port, and I'm using the analyst one. And now I'll add the service. So now once I have it, I will say I want to subscribe to, uh, instead of publish, I used publish, I will use subscribe to a topic. And then I will again copy the topic name for being faster. And uh, I need to be minus T. And then I will use uh, minus S to hold. So now when I'm publishing my topic here, I am seeing the value both in both places. So now we have seen uh, exactly how easy it is to set up and get, you know, like uh, get it working. So now we have established a connection very easily. Using our access management, we can also start looking at the different sort of analysis services and build our proof of concept. Uh, now the question is scaling. And for scaling and also for analysis, now let me go to um, our tool, Hive MQ Control Center, and I will again make the screen big. So here we uh, used our internal tool um, to uh, simulate some of the connections for our webinar. And you can see like, you know, you can see the number of connections, the publish rate, outbound uh, publish rate, subscriptions, as well as retained message and the nodes that you are using. Um, if I click on connections, I can see the publish rate and subscriptions, etc. Now let me go into the clients and refresh it. So then we see different services. So like we see four or five analysis service. Analyst one we created right now. We created plant one also right now. And you can see like which username and credentials they are using. And we also have a drill down analysis where you can click on them. You can disconnect them or refresh page and go from here to the next one and so on. Also for the subscriptions, we don't have a subscription here, but uh, you can see if you have shared subscriptions and similarly the retained messages you can also see. So like this is inbuilt observability that helps you debug and uh, you know like get everything easily in one place. And uh, this plan is uh, made for you know like the people who are looking into proof of concepts but want to quickly move into early production. So this is a very uh, that's why we call it the starter plan. And we also have getting started guides so so that you know you can start uh, don't have to start from scratch uh, so if i open something like cli it shows you how to get started with it and similarly if you have another favorite client like java or any other one you have those uh, those uh, like guides for you and uh, we also have uh, like let's say now you have created uh, you have all the data you have also scaled it and you now want also want to integrate your data so now you can um sorry let me just quickly go here and you can go into integrations and like i want to show you quickly confluent cloud integration so there are it's very easy to configure and you can source topic filter and destination filter and similarly create a bi-directional mapping so I think that's how it's possible to test your proof of concept and then quickly scale it. We also provide REST APIs. Uh, so there are some REST APIs and we are working to add more REST APIs to enable programmatic workflow. And if you want to have a look at more APIs, we provide like a really good documentation in open API format so that you can have a look at uh, yourself and then maybe, you know, uh, use programmatically some of those things. So I hope this was a good overview of how you can do that. And now I would like to ask you uh, maybe some of the use case that you are working on or planning to work on and how, uh, potentially like a cloud-based fully managed solution like cloud starter might be a potential option for you guys. So, 
uh, please feel free to add those things in the chat if you are willing to share, if it's not confidential. But uh, we would love to. Uh, you can also reach out to Maggie and me if uh, any one of you want to deep dive on some of the business use case related cloud starter. We have our con uh, contact information here in the slides as well. So we'd be happy to understand uh, your use cases or would be interested in talking to you. So you can reach out to us. Um, I think at this point, I would like to uh, maybe go and summarize it and open the floor quickly for Q&A. So key takeaways you learned, uh, I think like the most important key, key takeaway is that the taking a use case from idea to production is always challenging and it always depends what you are trying to achieve. Uh, MQTT can help boost speed and agility for production. And uh, let me take over here, Shashank. A fully managed MQTT platform can help you in certain cases, especially if you want to get started very quick and you do not want to think about how to manage and operate the, the broker. And um, the last point, yeah, having your cloud starter can help you to achieve speed and flexibility in your needs. So the starter plan is explicitly built for you to get from idea to production very, very, very quickly and uh, to support you in, in this case. And as Shashank already said, we're happy to hear your thoughts. We are happy to discuss your use cases with you. We're happy to hear your feedback also about the product and where we can improve. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, we are always, always open to have a coffee talk with you. Um, now I'll hand over to Marina to moderate question and answer session. And I think I just want to give uh, one uh, estimate about the pricing. I think we talked a lot about pricing, simple and easy. So the cluster I showed you right now, if you run one cluster entirely connected with, uh, you know, for 24, 24 hours for one whole month, uh, the connection charges would be less than like slightly less than $250 per month. And then the rest of the pricing would be how many messages are you sending? And for 1 million messages, normalized message, this was, uh, this cost like 80 cents. So it's not expensive at all. And uh, this is something that I wanted to just uh, say it out loud, <laughs> but yeah, happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, and uh, also my colleagues, Ryan and uh, Ravi, I would like to thank them because they have been working all this time answering your queries. So Marina, over to you now. Uh, thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Shashank, for an insightful webinar. Okay, so before we move on to a quick Q&A session, I'd like to run a short poll. So, uh, yeah, I'm launching the poll. Okay, so, um, yeah, dear audience, I kindly ask you to participate and uh, cast your votes. And, uh, yeah, let's let's uh, start the quick Q&A session now. Ravi and Ryan, thanks for uh, answering the questions in, in the Q&A box. Let's take a couple of more questions which uh, have not yet been answered. And the question, uh, the first question that uh, I would like to read out would be, provisioning on new IoT devices is usually a big deal. Can you share any recommendations and best practices on this activity? Who would like yeah, to certainly, uh, Marina, I can, I can take that. I was thinking about this question. Um, well, while, while the presentation was going on, and it's pretty specific to the clients where you will be provisioning, um, that you will be provisioning. And so it, I wouldn't say there's a best practice and typically, um, new client provisioning, like there are, um, device management, um, software solutions that are specific to device management. And this is not as much the specialization of uh, HiveMQ. Um, so it's not something that we have functionality um, for that we could say, like use this part of HiveMQ, but uh, certainly there are other uh, software platforms out there that are specialized in this regard. Awesome, thank you, Ryan. 
Okay, uh, we have one more question from uh, Alexander. What average event propagation delay can be achieved with HiveMQ Cloud? How it compares with HiveMQ on-premises? Not sure about the uh, delay specifically, Maggie. Do you know um, that? I mean, I, it, it, it depends. depends, I guess, is the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, it depends on the availability, where is the uh, host cloud service located, where are you, how much latency is between, you know, like if you have, a, I don't know, like you have a, a cloud cluster in Central Europe and then you have services in like South Africa, then definitely there's going to be some latency involved. But I think it depends in cloud. Yeah, yeah I mean, was... sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I, I I mean just just to double down on this, HiveMQ Cloud Starter right now is only available in Europe. Additional regions will be added very soon. Um, so with on-prem, you have a little bit of more flexibility where to run the cluster, so it can run a little bit closer to your your clients. Maybe depends on the use case um, and where your clients are located. But let's say if you deploy it. Um, in the same region as the cloud uh, cluster would be deployed, then you would notice no difference between both services because it, basically we are we are using the same services as you would use, um, so you shouldn't notice any difference here. Yeah, HiveMQ Cloud just uses HiveMQ in the background. It's the same software. Um, and what's uh, you know, pretty unique about HiveMQ is the consistent hashing algorithm that's used for cluster nodes uh, communicating with each other. So this really helps with keeping that propagation delay low, even as HiveMQ uh, scales with more nodes or more uh, CPU. It's a kind of a consistent linear scalability. Um, and uh, that's a big aspect of how we keep that delay uh, of propagation low. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, since uh, we're running out of time, I think we will take one more question. Uh, great presentation. Thanks. Why choose Hive over similar products, for example, Mosquito? I can take this question and maybe others can add. So uh, I think like, first of all, I'd like to say that Mosquito is a great open source product. Um, we have in cloud, so uh, like, first of all, HiveMQ Cloud in particular, is a fully managed service. Uh, we have something comparable to Mosquito that's uh, called HiveMQ Community Edition that you can also use for free for learning and purposes. If you want a fully managed solution for learning, HiveMQ uh, Cloud Serverless is the right option. Now, coming to the question, why HiveMQ Cloud over Mosquito? I think like the question is, uh, Mosquito is not made for like business critical use cases, while HiveMQ is, and a lot of our customers trust us. And uh, if uh, I think like, uh, if I have to go with one single reason, I think we are more scalable and more reliable platform. Uh, having said that, uh, I would like to maybe give chance to anybody else who wants to add something. I think it's just the enterprise great nature of HiveMQ, right? Yes, absolutely. Start off with Mosquito if you want to start off a project or start off with HiveMQ open source. And then very quickly, you'll realize that there are a lot of advanced feature functionality, especially if you have high SLAs, right? The cluster cannot go down or like the system cannot go down if there is like a downtime, right? Those are the kinds of things that our enterprise software supports, both on the cloud and on premise. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. So we are running out of time. Thank you so much, Ravi, Ryan, Maggie, and uh, Shashank for answering the questions. Thank you, dear audience, for uh, being active and for submitting these questions. Handing over to you, Shashank, for final comments. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, apologies. We cannot take all the questions. We'll try to get back to you on that. Uh, for resources, we are adding three resources uh, for you to help get started. Um, I would like to add here that, uh, you know, like if you create a new cloud starter, you get $100 in free credits. That means you have full right to try out the service and decide for yourself if you want to use it. There are no hidden charges there. 
and uh, our pricing is also very transparent. Uh, we have we are creating continuously content that might help users or other interested users to get started. And some of the things we have added in the link, and we'll be adding more features and more content to help you get started soon. So, with this, thank you from my side. And please feel free to reach out in case you have uh, you want to understand, like we want to understand your use cases. So if you have some use cases and you're unsure if Cloud Starter could be a right fit, uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to uh, me or Maggie. So thank you from my side. And uh, I think Maggie, uh, I think thank you from also Maggie's side. We are <laughs> short on time. And uh, I think, yeah. Uh, I'd like to hand over to Marina for final comments and organizational topics. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Maggie and Shashan for a great session. Thank you, Ravi and uh, Ryan for a QA. and um, thank you everyone for tuning in. As, uh, yeah, as already mentioned, we'll be sharing the recording later on this week. And uh, thanks. Thank you all. Thank you. Let's call it a day. Bye-bye. Okay, so much. See ya. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.